Today marks the day of the 20 year anniversary of quite possibly the greatest Commonwealth Games swim ever. The great Ian Thorpe produced one of the most astonishing swims the world has ever seen in the 400m freestyle, in which he broke his own world record in a time of 3 minutes 40.08. So in this video from Propulsion Swimming, we're going to take a look back at that amazing swim by doing a breakdown and a review of what was one of the best world record swims of all time. So let's go back in time and give it yet another watch. I remember the first time I watched this, the crowd was absolutely incredible. They knew they were on for something special for some reason in Manchester. This, the start of it was actually quite interesting because he's not known for his start, Ian Thorpe, but he's kind of last off the block. And then the underwater kicks, and he's miles in front. He doesn't get to the 15 meter mark, which is what you see nowadays, but he gets to 20, 10 meters. And it's so strong. Half a body length ahead of Hackett, a body length ahead of the rest of the field. And there he is. He's straight into his routine, straight into his rhythm, into his breathing pattern, and he's away. I mean, the technique is basically flawless. I mean, I've said many a time on this channel that this is as close to a perfect front crawl or freestyle technique that you're going to possibly get. Nice high elbow. You can kind of see it underneath the water here as well. There's a high elbow catch underneath. The leg kick is barely really happening at the moment. It's more done for balance and just as like easy speed. This first hundred, there's not a lot going on. Hackett is there, of course, more of a 1500 swimmer. So of course he was going to pose a little bit of a threat to him because he's got the stamina and endurance, but Thorpe has the speed. Alson a 52.9. I mean, that is, that's going some, isn't it? On a 400 free. What I find most interesting actually about Ian Thorpe is that he's able to breathe both to the left and right as comfortable on each side as possible. So as of right now, he's breathing to his left, always watching Hackett. You'll find that when he comes back on the next length, he's going to be breathing to his right and it doesn't disrupt his rhythm, doesn't disrupt his pattern, his speed, momentum, nothing. He's clearly well trained on both sides, breathing to both sides. And here we go, breathing. This shot is the best, the underwater shot. So it's a great camera work, zooming in on that catch. You can kind of see he's relaxing his fingers to so make sure there's no air, no bubbles whatsoever. So he's pulling 100% water. And so just all, already he's kind of building a little bit of lead over Grant Hackett. And when really at the halfway stage, this is where you start to most. So this is the best 400 meter freestyle techniques, tactics. 149.5 is just ridiculously quick for a 200 meter split on a 400. Great overhead shot here. And you can already see the white water is now starting to bubble up behind Thorpe. He's really starting to go to his legs a bit. This is where the best, like I said, the best 400 meter freestylers make their move. And he's already, the gap is building. What's that? Body length ahead now of Hackett. But you can, you can barely tell if there's any difference. You don't know if this is the first length or the last length because the technique from Thorpe barely changes. So smooth, so slick. The rest of the field are, are miles back, unfortunately. But yeah, now, now, now the lead is starting to tell. Another great shot here. Both at the high elbows, relaxed hand entry, barely any splash in front of him, yet the leg kick, I don't know what size shoe he is, but he's got, he's got massive feet, he's basically wearing flippers. Coming into the last 100 now, 245. I think at this point, I think he was a second underneath, underneath his own world record at this point. But now, now you can really see the legs starting to go. The stroke rate is now starting to increase. You can see the face is now starting to put a bit more, a bit more grit, a bit more energy into it. But yet the technique stays exactly the same. Just as smooth, just as slick. The catch is still there. If anything, actually, the body position is probably higher now because the, the intensity has gone up. If only he did streamline off his turns, how quick would he have gone? Just awesome. Another good shot. It'd be good to see if an underwater shot, if I remember right, there is another underwater shot coming where we can see that catch and his full extension to his hips. Hopefully it's coming up soon. Yes, here it is. Full extension, right the way in front of him, pushing the water back to his hips, legs going. And I think he holds his breath from about seven meters out here. And just imagine if he put an extra stroke in there. Oh, if that glide didn't happen, he could have been the first man to go under 339. That would have been absolutely sensational. I mean, it was a sensational swim to begin with. So let me go through some of the splits with you. This is what makes it even more staggering. The first 100, 53.02. The second 100, 56.55. The third 100, 55.8. And the final 100, 54.65. So he not only neg basically negative splitted, but he was getting quicker all the way through. The stroke rates were getting higher. He started the first, the first 50 was 27 strokes, but of course we have the dive. And then he was 
averaging basically 30, 31 strokes throughout. That just shows the efficiency of the bloke and just a sensational swim. And I, like I said, just the undisputed king of 400 meter freestyle. And really that this world record should still be standing today if it weren't for the super suits. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like. And of course, please subscribe to the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel to stay up to date with our newest uploads. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.